All right. All right, so uh, started the show off with a little uh, Berber music from Chad uh, for this, this special show, special time. And my special guests here, uh, Drs. Abiba Boomlik and Lucy McNair from the Departments of Education and Language Acquisition and English, respectively. Uh, and we're going to be talking today about the New York Forum of Amazig film in the Little Theater this Thursday, tomorrow, actually, April 20th. Welcome, doctors. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having us. So I'm trying to bring my Skype back on my screen here. I'm, I'm coming to you from my office on my, on my little laptop. It actually, well, it, no, it actually, it's Ace's laptop. I'm going to have to give it back one day uh, after everything settles down now that COVID. So welcome. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the format, and you know, one of the things I realize is that Lucy has been on my show before, Dr. McNair, but uh, Dr. Boomlik, you have never been on the show, uh, so I told you a little bit about the format. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and uh, your studies before coming to LaGuardia? Thank you, Go, for the invitation. Uh, so my name is Habiba Boomlik. Uh, this is, uh, I'm starting my 11th year at LaGuardia Community College. I am the ELA department, Education and Language Acquisition. Uh, I teach languages, mostly French, Arabic, and I also teach uh, other courses, uh, including the LIB 200. I actually developed a course on the MENA, Middle East and North Africa cinema. And um, I studied uh, in France. I got my PhD in uh, social and cultural anthropology from the University of Strasbourg, France. And uh, I taught abroad. And uh, I've been uh, teaching in the U.S. for um, over uh, 20 years now. <laughs> and um, uh, we will be talking later about uh, the uh, uh, Amazir Film Festival. Very good. You, you kind of encapsulated everything. Uh, and this always happens that when, when I tell my guests ahead of time what they're going to talk about, they figure out how to say it in two minutes. And we, we could have typically we spend the first half hour kind of <laughs> on this topic but since you've topped things okay so i guess one of the questions this is not uh well let's talk about how did, how did lucy get involved with this uh, dr mcnair how did you how did the two of you come together because you're in the english department yes i am right so um let's see so my name is lucy mcnair thank you for having me on again you go and i teach um writing and creative writing in the uh, english department and also the program language across the curriculum and I do language across the curriculum because my PhD is in comparative literature. And my focus was translating the first novel of an Algerian Amazir writer um, who wrote in French. His name was Mouloud Faroun, and I translated his novel, The Poor Man's Son. And so that was a window for me onto Amazir culture. I was just absolutely fascinated. I also, it's something I stumbled upon when I was living in Paris long ago. Um, just this amazing, you know, oral culture, um, people who knew poetry, um, music. Uh, I was just, I, I was just blown away when I, when I discovered this. And so, um, so I was doing that parallel to my job at LaGuardia, like a lot of us have, have, have dual kind of directions. And when I came to LaGuardia eight years ago, I, I, I heard about this woman named Habiba Bumlik and I was like, oh my gosh, she might be Amazir. And so I contacted her and it was very funny because she was doing the um, mother language day. And she said, oh yeah, come and meet me. We can meet like that. So I came and, and there she was in this traditional kaftan. And I was like, ooh, she's really a serious, you know, Amazir person. And, and I introduced myself and then she smiled and said, do you like my costume? <laughs> Um, so, um, so when she was invited um, by LPAC and the school to show some films that explored Muslim identities, um, she had the idea to start showing Amazir films. And so I joined her in that effort. So she, she kind of founded the, the festival and I, I joined her at that point. So, you know, uh, Dr. Boomlik back in on this, but I'm at a loss. Amazir. Now, when you say that, what does that mean? What is what, what, are you, what are we talking about here? Is that a an ethnic group, a language group? Uh, what, I'm at a loss. That's of course, absolutely. So interestingly enough, the first edition in 2015, we used the term Berber 
right. uh, because uh, that we thought that there was the most common uh, word. And I'll also explain later how it all started. Right. And uh, then we switched the second year to the word Amazir. Uh, the people themselves do not refer refer to themselves as the Berber, since this term was used by others to refer to them. Uh, so they use the term Amazir, which means uh, uh, free or uh, fr a free man, a free human. And uh, so Amazir refers, as you said, to perhaps a multitude of ethnic groups who live mostly in North Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, and nowadays in the large diaspora. And linguistically, too, when Amazir refers to a group of languages uh, that are not, um, uh, uh, they are not Semitic, but can be too Semitic. I mean, they're close to Arabic, but they're not uh, Arabic languages. Uh, so it's a multitude of identities that encompass identity, language, and uh, feeling, feeling of believing to uh, a community. Uh, that is real, that is lo localized in the land, referred to in the Amazigh language as Tamazgha, which is actually a neologism, a new concept created to refer to the land of the Amazigh people. So Tamazgha encompasses not only North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa, but also the Canary Islands. And now today, since many Amazigh people live in the diaspora in Europe, in Canada, in the US and elsewhere, so the imaginary Tamazra could also uh, be where we are living uh, uh, today, uh, here and now. Uh, very good. I was going to ask, uh, Dr. McNair, when you did your translation, you, you did it from what to what? From, from something to English, right? Yeah, so... Um, With the language. I mean, everybody, you know, people know that there was colonialism in right. these countries, you know, and so... A lot of these people, when they became literate, became literate in colonial languages. Uh, Tamazir is the, the the over the language of the Amazir, um, and there is an alphabet, Tifana, which is ancient, but generally the culture is oral. It has an incredibly rich oral um, tradition. But when people became literate, they became literate in um, colonial languages. So the writer I translated became literate in French. Um, and so that he wrote that book in French. And so you translated from the French to right. the English. Yeah, but it's interesting because he, a lot of, it's interesting, he wasn't translated. His book was from 1950 and he wasn't translated. And it's, it's a very interesting history of how in the transition out of colonialism, a lot of Amazir people were discriminated against. Their language was not officially recognized. Their culture was not valued. And so there was there was a long period in post-colonial uh, time where there was a big struggle for rights um, to to practice their 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 language and their and their cultural uh, practices. And so um, that's a it, that's really a big part of why we're doing this festival is because since the mid '90s. Um, people have had access to audiovisual, and so they've begun to represent themselves. And cinema has really been an avenue towards liberation. Yeah, and it's funny. Well, when you said Nigeria, because I think of whenever I think of Nigeria, I think of the English. Of no, the Niger. British. Oh, Niger. Uh, okay, right. I'm not. I never knew how to pronounce it. So Niger, I guess. But um, so look, well, what, we've been talking a little bit about the history of things so you want to talk about the history of the, f the festival let's talk about uh the past uh you want to start that off dr boomlich sure absolutely so uh the first uh, edition of this uh, festival took place in march 2015 and uh, we call it the berber film festival and it started with the uh, beyond sacred uh, and thinking muslim identity so it was sponsored by this uh, year-long a multidisciplinary program and that the program encompassed over 50 per performances and community discussions and the goal of these um, uh, performances and community discussion was to create and expand the awareness and understanding of the muslim culture in post 9 11 uh, in new york city and also to foster a complex understanding of uh, muslim identities uh, today 
Uh, what's interesting is that this program was presented not only at LPAC, but also at uh, public spaces throughout New York City. And one of the goals was to up open a dialogue between Muslims and non-Muslim communities, and also to challenge our notions of group uh, identity. So when I started, uh, we uh, collaborated with the uh, Tesla Institute. So it's an institute run by uh, Helen Hagen, who is an anthropologist. Uh, she lives in LA. Uh, she, so she provided the films for the first edition and uh, uh, she was running uh, the Los Angel Angeles Amazir Film Festival for many years. I think uh, she started in 2007, if I'm not uh, mistaken. And so this is how it started. So the first year we called it uh, Berber Film Festival. And then uh, Lucy joined me and then the following uh, year, uh, we thought about a, a better way of presenting ourselves, uh, our uh, um, efforts uh, to give visibility to Amazir cinema. And we, the goal was also to educate not only ourselves, but also to educate our community. So our first community is the community of our students our colleagues at La Guardia and also the larger community of uh, New York. Uh, so we used uh, the term Amazir instead of Berber. And since then we have not been uh, using the term uh, uh, Berber. So this is how it started. And when Lucy joined, uh, uh, Lucy helped uh, really reshape the, uh, the festival. Well, first of all, we, we needed to find a new term for, for us. Uh, thanks to Lucy and also thanks to the uh, um, efforts of uh, two other colleagues. We'll talk about them later, Yahya Layouni and Wafa Bakri. Uh, we created a new term for, for our uh, effort, our group. And uh, we also started to give a different impulse uh, to this uh, uh, endeavor, uh, uh, a pedagogical component that become more and more important. And Lucy is actually the one uh, who was behind this initiative, and she will be able to to talk about it. Do you want to talk about that? Uh, um, sure. Well, God, it's such a good introduction. <laughs> I better talk about it. Um, you know, it's so nice to hear, actually, Habiba, you talk about the history of it because it's really evolved a lot. Um, I think, you know, the fun thing is just looking at a lot of films and just seeing how this... Um, this practice, this new practice of film is transposing what was an oral tradition onto something that is a vehicle for people in New York to see. It's, it's really remarkable. Um, and so in that spirit and in the spirit of LaGuardia, which has this whole idea of global learning, um, which was broken down into different parts, we started to see that what we were doing was actually putting in practice this idea of um, of communicating across difference. Like, you know, it was on paper kind of in the, you know, in the strategic framework of the, of the college, but we realized that is actually what we're doing. And so we have um, students come and we've had, oh, we've had, we've done so many things. We've had students preview the films and then be on stage as kind of translators of the film for the audience. Um, we've had students be involved in, in just the organizational aspect of it. We once um, had part of the film at Columbia and we students came from from El, from LaGuardia to Columbia and back. So it's been um, a very active pedagogical you know exercise. And we've also tried to create a, an assignment each edition. And that assignment is a handout that we give and that we give to everybody on, on campus, which gives context for the film, um, as well as questions to ask, um, and a kind of direction of how to incorporate what you're learning into maybe actions you take uh, in, your, in your personal life. How do you go about you know, getting these films and, and getting the rights to air them? Because I'm guessing these are all new these are new films as a festival you're trying to show the most current uh you know examples of filmmaking that are going on in this community so how does how does that how did you go about doing that did you want to talk about that dr boomlich sure absolutely this is one of the most uh, perhaps difficult aspects of the film festival is uh, first locating films the film distributors and uh, also bringing them uh, to new york 
a lot of the filmmakers uh, work, of course, in North Africa, but they also work in the diaspora. But film distribution is actually a, a, a very, very big uh, issue. Uh, these films are distributed locally, sometimes even locally. Sometimes films are made in North Africa and are not seen in North Africa. Sadly, they are seen in uh, film festivals, uh, local national film festivals or international uh, film festivals. So we we look for films, uh, we contact the filmmakers, distributors, we watch them and once we agree on screening them, then we deal with the um, uh, intricacies of uh, uh, paying for screening fees. I should also say that um, often the filmmakers waived screening fees because they were just happy to uh, have a screen of films, develop assignments uh, based on their films and uh, bring them to a larger audience. Um, some films are recent, uh, some are not that recent, so uh, uh, screening fees are not really that uh, big of a deal. But uh, uh, it is a sin because we rely on funds from uh, La Guardia, <laughs> Student Affairs, and everything has to go through uh, CUNY first. And so there is a process, there is a lot of uh, <laughs> administrative work uh, required. It's taken, a, sure. it takes a lot of time, uh, you know, but that's part of, uh, uh, I think, a, a film festival. So, but we, we definitely thank La Guardia for its support. I mean, uh, LPAC has been supportive since the beginning. One, uh, actually, um, when La Guardia received this uh, huge fund from Doris Duke Foundation, um, I was asked to join the steering committee and the former president of uh, LPAC um, asked me to join, then he asked me to bring uh, speakers to talk about aspects of uh, uh, um, Muslim culture, especially uh, minorities within Muslim cultures. And uh, I went to his office once and I said, you know, you have the funds and I would love to do something that will uh, shed light on a minority within a minority, which I know well. And he said, which minority? I said, well, uh, to the, the Amazigh or Berber uh, community, which is not minority, but it's referred to as the minority, and it is within the minorities in the, in the Muslim communities. And I said, um, I could start a, a film festival about the Amazigh uh, uh, culture in North Africa and the diaspora, and this is actually how it started. So the plan was also to organize um, uh, an exhibition, a photo exhibition, at Queen's, um, uh, uh, Queen's, I think Queen's Photography, right? Art Photography? You mean talking about the Queen's Museum of Art? Yes, Queen's Museum of Art, I'm sorry, yes. So That's we fine. had some really beautiful uh, portraits made, uh, portraits of students and staff and uh, faculty. Uh, the exhibition didn't take place. We did have some uh, portraits exhibited at La Guardia, but that part didn't take uh, place. But I mean, thanks to uh, Stephen Hitt's support, the festival has been going on, including during the pandemic, we had uh, two virtual editions. And this was a, a success because we were able to reach a larger community of um, uh, North Africans and others living on, in North Africa, uh, in Europe and elsewhere. And we have, we will continue uh, our virtual edition this year, and I'm sure we can talk about it later. Yeah, uh, Dr. McNair, uh, when you're making these decisions of the films, I mean, it's, listening to your backgrounds, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Boomlake's a social anthropologist. You are uh, com you're into comparative literature, which I guess falls in. I mean, are are you are you do you do you, do you favor documentary or fict or fiction films uh, either one or is it just basically you're looking for the best filmmaking and the best representation of a culture what are you looking for in these in these decisions best best movie what you, it's what interesting because it? um a couple of years ago we we published actually no it was last year we published an article in a, a review called jadalia said looking for amazir film and um what we're finding and this is, it's interesting you ask this because we're, we're just, uh, we've just uh, submitted a manuscript for a book collection of articles um, on Amazir film that has grown out of the festival actually and all the people that we've met through it, the filmmakers as well as the scholars. And a consensus in the book and, and also in our practice was that 
it's really important when you're looking at indigenous film in particular, that you don't um, bring your cultural bias, well, you try to be very aware of your cultural bias and you try to really cast a very wide net because these are cultures often that are moving from an oral um, performance. It, it's not an entertainment. It's, it's like, it's a mixture of kind of ritual and celebration a lot of times. And this is kind of coming into um, the medium of film. And so you want to look at everything. You want to look at music videos. You want to look at um, just like recordings of events that are happening, storytelling events. Um, a colleague of ours at Williams College really looks calls calls it Am Amazir Utubia. Um, it's all that is circulating on YouTube about musical events and storytelling. There's these there's this practice of um, kind of community poets who, it's like a poetry slam. They kind of get up and they they kind of have a comp competition in captivating the, the attention of the audience. And this is coming onto to YouTube. And so a lot of people, scholars, as well as participants and um, Azir people are seeing, seeing this all kind of come uh, into something that is a vehicle that can go places now and be seen in different places. So we look at everything. and. And we kind of then focus in on shorts, documentaries, and features. And they're they're all good. They're all important. So this on tomorrow, we have two features and we have two shorts. And um, and the, the shorts are fantastic, just like a short story. A short story is a genre, a short film is a genre. And they're really fun to um, to watch. They bring you to a place you might not know about, but then the more you unpack it, you realize there's a lot of connections. Um, and so I, it's a great question, Hugo. It's been a it's been a um, a learning opportunity for me to kind of put aside my idea of what is a film um, and and really look at at film and, and video as this as this medium of cultural preservation and invention. Oh so here's a question for you and you can take this uh, Dr. Boomlich, which is, it, it, it's, you know, it's a big deal here at LaGuardia. Have you considered moving it, m making it c CUNY wide, let's say? Like, uh, for example, I, I know that uh, Dr. Hernandez, Anna Maria Hernandez has, uh, they, they have the Cuban Film Festival, but that, that's actually kind of a, a national thing and uh, that they, but it's involved, you know, it's, I guess it has some involvement with the graduate center and, and the Bildner center. Have you had, have you had any thoughts about, you know, I mean, you obviously you're getting a lot of support from LaGuardia and LPAC and we should just say that, you know, uh, uh, that um, now, <laughs> now I'm having a senior moment here, but uh, uh, L, our former LPAC director, Steve who is Hitt. Stephen Hitt. Yeah. Stephen Stephen Hitt, who's actually moved on now, uh, who retired. Uh, I, I mean, I guess are there any considerations of of, of, of making it more CUNY wide? Well, sure. Thank you for your question, Hugo. Uh, with the, um, in addition to the pedagogical component of our film festival, another uh, interesting aspect of our festival is that it is free and open to all. True, we target students, our colleagues first, but it's free and open to everyone. So anyone can come. We try to advertise within CUNY uh, to anyone. We did have uh, people attend from other CUNY colleges, but um, right now with the pandemic, uh, uh, I think we uh, <laughs> had to um, revise our, um, our goals, uh, our, our strategy. And uh, we transition into in person. So we're going to see tomorrow what the audience is going to be like. And um, attendance, uh, the virtual attendance has been really good. So uh, in the future, I think if the, and correct me, I don't know if Lucy, if you agree with me, but I think if we grow, I think we do have a space at LaGuardia. I mean, when we fill the little theater, uh, that's this, we, we're really happy. I mean, we're talking about over 200 people. Uh, the next uh, step, if we really, really grow, will be the main stage. I mean, that would be <laughs> tremendous. Wow. So uh, I think uh, bringing CUNY to LaGuardia would be perhaps our next goal more than us going abroad. We do go to the um, uh, CUNY Graduate Center, to Memeac. We talk about it. 
as uh, Lucy uh, mentioned before, we went to Colombia. We're collaborating with the Middle Eastern uh, uh, Study Center at Colombia, and we are looking for other collaborations. We actually have just been contacted by the, by, uh, the Université Lucam, University of Quebec in Montreal, to um, see with us the possibility of collaboration in the future. Uh, so we did have some requests and uh, we need support. I mean, it's only four of us uh, doing this on a voluntary basis. So this is an open call to anyone who would like to join our teams. Uh, we need experts. We need volunteers. Uh, we have a Facebook page. We have a web website. We have assignments to create. There's a lot to do. So please, <laughs> if you are interested in joining us, uh, please do. And when it comes to the film selection, uh, we are a team and we don't agree. We don't agree on the quality of the film. We don't agree on the vision uh, uh, of the filmmakers, but we come to a compromise. I mean, there are films that I personally like that I would have liked to show this year, but uh, we need to come to an agreement. We need to agree on a theme too that is, uh, uh, that is conveyed by some strong films, uh, but it's a work in progress and the knife has evolved and it will be evolving and it's growing and we also grow uh, with the uh with NAFAF. we're the half hour mark so i need to just do a quick uh station id uh the show is what's going on i'm your host hugo fernandez here on laguardia web radio and today my guests are dr sabiba boomlik and lucy mcnair from the departments of education and language acquisition and english what? respectively and we're talking about the new york forum of amazir film uh, which is going to be in the Little Theater this Thursday, April 20th. Uh, I'm realizing you guys got the Little Theater. I'm trying to get the Little Theater for something else, but i got to talk to Isabel about that. So let's let's dive deep into this year's festival. And uh, uh, our engineer, Mr. Pope, behind the scenes, uh, has got the links so he can pull up the, uh, the, whatever, the, the website and tell us a little bit about uh, maybe use that as a vehicle. We also talked about if, if possible, we might want to watch uh, a trailer of, of one or two of the films that uh, we're going to see. How are we doing there, Mr. Pope? He's working on it. Yeah, I, I can't see. I've got Twitch behind me. Oh, it's up. Yeah, look at that. Look at, look at my screen. Okay, I'm working on it. My computer is, you know. Oh, here we go. Okay, so. We are back, eighth edition, Thursday, April twentieth, in person. Uh, all right, but but you're saying that people can watch this remotely as well, correct? No, they cannot rewatch them. What the we will be live streaming the oh. film discussions on Facebook on Knife uh, Facebook page, but uh, these are uh, in person uh, viewing screening. Okay, very good. There okay, is, so I mean, as we'll go further along, there is a virtual edition, but that's not happening until May second. Okay, so from this page, where, where can where, where would you recommend that we go to look at something? So is just, it just scroll down? Um, so it talks a little bit about us and everything. Then here are the trailers as you get down. Okay, um, so you can watch some of the trailers. Uh, Should we watch? Should should we watch a few? Like, let's watch these. Argu. Sure, you can try watch a trailer. Is this going to work, Mr. Pope? <laughs> All right. Can you make it bigger? No. I don't hear the don't sound. Hear the sound. It's, me, it's me. The film of, the film two, of rivers. two rivers. Uh, it's in French. Are you, are you talking about the subtitles or the, the, the subtitles? We can't, we can't hear the hear sound, the sound though. <laughs> I do this. I do this. I do this. I do this. To, 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 to our engineer every, every time. time. Sadly, sadly, that, you, you know, know, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't. It didn't dawn on dawn me. On hey, me let's, hey, let's watch some of the trailers. Trailers and let's watch some of the films. Well, maybe yeah. we, we, we could if watch. You can, yeah, if you can do it later, maybe try What If the Goats Die? There might be English subtitles on that. But or maybe anyway, we, we can talk about the films. Yeah, talk about the films. So what, so, oh, wait a minute. Chris is doing something else here now. 
So if you go down down below after the trailers, you'll see the program. Right. And it starts at 1030. There's a feature length film from Algeria called Argu right. by Omar Belkasimi. And this is a film that um, really started us off on our theme this year, which is facing the unexpected. Um, I think it's also because we've just all faced the unexpected with a pandemic. We were kind of in that mode and these films for some reason or another surprise us. And this first film, I mean, Habiba can talk about it too, but um, what's surprising is that there's a main character who is, um, I would say neurodiverse, a person who is non-gender conforming, um, a person who's just himself um, and his name is Kuku and he lives in a village and the film is about how the village responds to him and how he responds to the village. Um, and so after, after the film, there'll be a Q&A with Habiba and a colleague of ours, Kai Krenka, who's a wonderful scholar of Algerian Francophone literature and our colleague Yahya Layuni. All right, uh, is, there, is it an accident that it's so close to the to the Academy Award winning film Argo as far as title? <laughs> no, no relation? No. Well, I mean, there is, uh, I interviewed the filmmaker for the book that Lucy mentioned before. Right. So I interviewed him last time in last summer, but also a few uh, last year. And um, he was traveling extensively. And um, he was telling me how it was uh, difficult to work as an Amazigh filmmaker. And his film, he told me, was the only really film touring film festivals. Yet he was getting a lot of critique in Algeria because he dares to talk about the uh, Kabyle culture, Kabyle identity. Uh, he's doing wonderful uh, work, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this film is awarded another big, big award. All right. Uh, Want to talk about Seeds of Memory or What If the Goat Dies? Sure. So um, Seeds of Memory is another big surprise. There is a foundation in Marrakesh called the High Atlas Foundation, founded by former Peace Corps volunteers together with their Moroccan colleagues that seeks to promote sustainability, cultural sustainability, economic sustainability, and environmental sustainability. And over the past few years, they've started this project, um, which is absolutely fascinating. They have connected people who uh, are Jewish, but no longer live in Morocco due to many reasons but still have land there, and in this case, a cemetery, and the site of a, of a, a holy man, um, the holy rabbi Raphael Hakohen, who died 700 years ago, but his burial site is still there. And they've offered this cemetery land to the Hyatlas Foundation to make a tree um, seed nursery. And so it's a combination of a Jewish, um, Amazir and Muslim Amazir people coming together to get reconnected, so cultural sustainability, but to promote um, the reforestation of Morocco. So this is one place um, that's connected to many other um, locations where they're trying to they're trying to plant 10 million trees in Morocco, and so they're part of that effort. And it's just it's just totally surprising. I was very very lucky to visit this this place in February. And so I met the people and I saw that they had this wonderful short documentary. So we're sharing it with LaGuardia. And we're combining that with something very different. Um, it's a short feature, it's a short fiction film by an up and coming uh, Moroccan filmmaker, Sophia, uh, Sophia Alawi. And here we have, um, we have a, a villager who's in a very remote place in Morocco. Um, and he has to come to the town to find food for his goats. And when he comes there, he encounters something very unusual. I almost don't want to talk about it. You guys should come see it. Okay, no, that's fine. All right. Well, well since we're in the program, let's sc scroll down uh, to what's going on, if you can, Chris, for uh, the performance from four to five. So what can we expect for that? So since the beginning, we have tried to, to also include the musical component to the film festival because we believe that music is another important aspect of any culture and in this case of the Amazigh culture. 
And so this year we're going to have a, a musician from Morocco who plays a, a musical instrument called lutar. So uh, it's um, uh, it's a, a plucked uh, lute with three chords. Although recently they added a fourth chord, and uh, it's quite unique to uh, many parts of the uh, uh, Atlas Mountain in, in Morocco. Uh, so uh, he will play and. Uh, uh, and he will sing also in Amazigh, um, and uh, he will give uh, our audience um, an idea about one, uh, one an example of musical uh, uh, Amazigh music, because of course there is a, a vast diversity in the musical uh, expressions within the large Amazigh uh, community. And then the last feature film is a, is a road movie. Uh, by Tariq Al Idrisi, who is actually flying right now. He's on his way to New York, so he will be attending with us tomorrow evening for his U.S. premiere. Uh, so uh, we're very thrilled to show this film, a road movie that starts in the Canary Islands and uh, ends somewhere in uh, uh, in Egypt, because as I said before, Tamazgha, the Amazigh land, is is vast. So it goes from the Canary Islands all the way to Siwa and Sub-Saharan Africa. And this is a powerful film. This is, I, I believe, one of the first films where we are going to see examples, geographic locations of the Tamazgha. Uh, so starting in Canary Island, Morocco, Algeria, uh, we're going to see parts of uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and so forth. And uh, since we're talking about music, so the road movie is about searching for a sound, for an Amazigh or a Berber sound. And uh, he will be there to take questions from our audience. When you say sound, are you talking about musical sound? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Uh, so, Chris, what's, what's the likelihood that we could play a uh, trailer that, and hear it? Is there any chance of that? He's saying no. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. My reach always exceeds my grasp. Uh, but anyhow, but, it, he's pulling up. He's showing us, you know, and I guess we could, I, we could actually just watch this, watch the video and, and you could tell us what we're looking at, or we could just encourage people to come and, and, uh, and see it. So he's, uh, so what else, what else would, should, can we get from the website is, uh, cause, oh, this is the LPAC well, website. We also want to just say that, so this is the program tomorrow. But we all, we're also, um, we're going to screen films virtually. So you're going to be able to watch two films um, uh, between April 25th and, April, and May 2nd. This is on another page if you go to the virtual page. Um, and so those films will be free, available to anybody who wants to, to screen them. And then on May 2nd, we're really thrilled um, to invite anthropologist Kevin Dwyer and a really fantastic feminist sociologist, Zakia Salime, to come uh, help us understand some of the themes in these films. And so we'll have a discussion on May 2nd at 9.30. And so if you, if you can't come tomorrow, um, but you have access to um, Zoom, then you can join us on May 2nd. Here's a question. Uh, you know, we're known as the most diverse university or college in CUNY. And we always get into these arguments with the Queens College people and and uh, and the folks at uh, you know the other the other Queens. What is it, Queens Queensboro community? And uh, I mean, have we ever do we do we have students that identify as Amazir at the and do do we have any do they have any involvement with this with this uh, experience here that we that we're aware of? Yes, we do have students who identify as being Amazir. Uh, yes, we do have students who attend and who are um, um, very interested in watching films, sometimes very disappointed too. And we did have some students express almost their anger because their representation of the Amazir culture, Amazir uh, society is quite different from their experience of uh, Amazir uh, uh, cultures when they travel back to Morocco or Algeria. And which is okay, because I think uh, we are trying also to educate our students about the diversity of the Amazigh uh, culture, Amazigh uh, ethnic groups, Amazigh language groups. We invited uh, 
a filmmaker and a producer from the Canary Islands uh, to one of our editions. And it was an eye opener to our students to see uh, people who live in the Canary Islands who practice a different religion, who speak a different uh, language, who have a different history, who have been cut from their Amazigh uh, history and lineage for many, many centuries. Uh, yet, uh, we have uh, people in the Canary Island who are trying to reclaim their Amazigh identity, who are doing an amazing archaeological linguistic work and also uh, very, very interesting work in the uh, documentary, but also feature and shorts. And we have people who are trying to reclaim their Amazigh identity. And Amazigh identity, again, is not limited to one language, to one faith. Uh, it's uh, talking about diversity of faiths. And we do hope to uh, screen once, uh, one day, films about other um, religious minorities, uh, minorities within uh, North Africa and the diaspora. We have uh, shown films about the Jewish heritage in North Africa, and we are looking for other films. The short that uh, Lucy mentioned before, Seeds of Memory, will touch on this, will touch on the Jewish heritage, at least uh, in Morocco. But the Jewish heritage uh, has been playing an important part in uh, North African identity, and we should not uh, deny it. I think we should uh, acknowledge it, uh, because uh, we are in favor of um, enhancing uh, uh, cultural di di diversity. At least this is uh, uh, my firm uh, belief. I don't know if you'd like to add something, Lucy? I think um, one maybe just one thing I've been really surprised about is how, how we've been thinking about indigeneity, about what it means to be indigenous, to be native to a place. And what we've found uh, as we've shown these films to our students, it connects with what it is like to be an immigrant. There was a film, Myopia, we showed last year where uh, an indigenous woman says, I'm just passing through. And my students totally connected with that as immigrants, that they were just passing through. And so there's a really interesting connection here about how people experience um, a sense of belonging, um, but also are in movement. So, I don't know, I just wanted to say that. It's it's really a fascinating connection. So we're actually in the last quarter hour of the show where we typically use the time to talk about the future. And, uh, what, you know, if you want to talk about the future of the festival or even the future of some of the other projects that the, the two of you are involved in. Uh, so what, what, what about the future? Sure, I think uh, for me, before even talking about the future, I could perhaps just say uh, one word about about the real relevancy of what we're doing to our students. Why should we bother? Why should we show films uh, from North Africa and the diaspora when we're dealing with uh, cultures at La Guardia from all over the world? Why not show films from, uh, I don't know, Bangladesh or Pakistan or Mexico? And um, so I think there are many reasons for us to do this. But in addition to the fact that uh, I come from that part of the world and it's part of my culture. And when I started this, uh, I said that I wanted to do something perhaps I know a little bit about. <laughs> so uh, uh, that's relevant to me. But I think showing uh, uh, Amazigh cinema is uh, relevant. Of course, it is relevant to the Amazigh people. Why? Because as uh, Lucy explained before, uh, Amazigh cinema, Amazigh culture, uh, uh, Amazigh identity have been marginalized. Uh, for many, many, many years uh, during the colonial time, after the independences, and and so forth. So when uh, the Amazigh cinema started to develop, it was uh, it was something it was amazing for the Amazigh people because for the first time they were able to see uh, films with actors that look like them, uh, that speak their language, that reflect them. So Amazigh cinema is relevant first to the Amazigh people. But I think it's also uh, relevant to uh, our students because we're ex exposing our students uh, to stories and uh, uh, through films, they can see the unique cultural identity of uh, uh, these people. And I think it's also important for us to emphasize the fact that uh, cinema helps preserve Amazigh culture and traditions for future generations. Uh, so, 
I think by doing this, we are just like with the scholars, with filmmakers, we're helping to promote a greater understanding uh, of uh, Amazigh culture. And we're also trying to challenge the stereotypes, the prejudices that have marginalized uh, Amazigh people uh, uh, for uh, many years. Uh, so we have themes, and I think that those themes are relevant to our students. Uh, facing the unexpected is, uh, I think, a uh, uh, universal theme. When we showed films um, we, about women's situations, women's status in a part of North Africa, we linked it to the Me Too movement. When we show films about um, exile, immigrations uh, to Europe or elsewhere, I think this is relevant to our students and they can uh, identify to the struggle mm -hmm that uh, many North Africans uh, go through, uh, whether living uh, in North Africa or in the diaspora. All right. Uh, Lucy, I mean, Dr. McNair, do you want to, uh, what would, do you want to add to that or do you want to talk you know, about just, the future? Just a plan? little bit maybe about the future of NIFAF. So, I mean, this really wouldn't exist without Habiba, um, Dr. Boomlik. She is an amazing um, connector. She really connects with people. Um, in many different languages and places. And so it's really been fascinating to accompany her in this. Um, and what's happened is we've gone to different places. We're going to Montreal next week um, to meet other people who are doing film festivals of indigenous cultures in the world. And we're coming to, we're all part of a grant of the Canadian government to come together to say, what is it? What are we doing? What are we doing by, by showcasing these films of indigenous people? And so it's, I think in the future, we'll continue to, to connect with this effort of, um, of looking at indigenous cultures through film, which is also looking at our futures because the indigenous cultures are very involved in, in sustainability um, in terms of agriculture, in terms of living on the land. So we're, the, the future of, of Nightbop is connected with like looking at our future as human beings. And, um, and then also where we're, we're publishing a book of, of essays by um, scholars that we've met along the way in uh, France, in Morocco, uh, in Canada, in the United States. So, so LaGuardia and the P LaGuardia Performing Arts Center has really been uh, a, 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 a wonderful, wonderful, I don't know how to say this, a kind of, um, I think of, um, I don't know, a cradle or something to help us um, meet people and bring people together. And, um, and I hope what Habiba's done this year is to bring us back to LaGuardia, to bring us into the little theater and to bring us back together. <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't been physically together in so long. And so even if there's five people at 2 p.m. tomorrow, I'm gonna be really happy um, because we're gonna watch the films together and, and try to figure out how we're, we're going to continue to be uh, on site on LaGuardia. Yeah, well, I hope to be there for the later, uh, the later stuff after I'm finished with all my teaching and meetings and office hours, especially since I have a place to stay. <laughs> I've been promised between here and New Haven, but uh, so uh, we're 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 kind of clocking down. I want to save a little time again for the uh, for our music uh, finish. Uh, any last things you'd like to say? to uh, anybody you want to thank or anything that you haven't had a chance to say that you'd like to say before we close? Well, I think I would like to uh, thank LaGuardia Community College. I would like to thank LPAC. LPAC's team has been supportive uh, since day one. Uh, I would like to thank my colleague, co-curator, Lucy McNair. I would like to thank the team, uh, Yahya and Wafa, everyone else who has been uh, uh, supporting our efforts since the beginning. And um, I would like to thank the students who helped us in the past and who are showing interest, who are expressed interest in uh, perhaps helping in the future. And uh, this is a call for, again, anyone who would like to join uh, our team. Uh, we are uh, welcome to have you join us and expand us and help us think this through. And uh, just Adding to what uh, Lucy said, uh, in addition to the pedagogical uh, aspect of uh, NIFAF, we also have a scholarly aspect. 
uh, of NIFAF. We have presented in a, a variety of uh, conferences, international and national conferences. I just came back from Heidelberg where I presented about the notion of space in uh, selected Amazir films. So we talk about NIFAF, we also talk about La Guardia. So uh, La Guardia has been represented in Morocco, in Europe, in Canada, in many parts of the world, including Argentina. So thank you, La Guardia. Thank you, Alpac, and thank you for uh, co your continuous support. Great, and thank you, Hugo, for letting us um, blabber on. <laughs> of course. Well, that's, oh, that, that's it. That's all the thank yous that you have, <laughs> Dr. McNair. Well, you know, I'm trying to be better, but I, I will tell you that honestly, all the things you've talked about have excited me just listening. And I think all I, all I think about is all the different groups in LaGuardia you could be collaborating with, but also the fact that, you know, I mean, as a Cuban, I'm obviously uh, directly connected to West Africa. Where, where my you know my family came from, uh, portions of my family came from, uh, but I also had people who came from the Canary Islands as well. Uh, my grandmother who had a who had an uncle uh, from the Canary Islands. My mother always talked about the Canary Islands, and so and that just that whole part of the world. I mean, Spain being being uh, of, of you know Hispanic descent or whatever you want to whatever we're calling ourselves these days, Latin A. So I've. Uh, I've really enjoyed having you and excited, but as a host, I'm trying not to go off on tangents because I so many <laughs> times I could have gone and said like, oh, you know, this excites me because, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, but it's been, uh, you know, I haven't done a show and if it, Chris and I haven't done a show in a while and, uh, you know, it's always when it first gets started stuff, but I got to tell you, it's been a lot of fun to have the two of you on, uh, you know, the work you're doing, you know, you're uh, obviously brilliant scholars. Uh, and great public speakers, and uh, thank you for being on our show. All right, so uh, I want to close here by just saying that uh, you've been watching the show, What's Going On. I'm your host, Hugo Fernandez, here on LaGuardia Web Radio, and uh, my guests today have been Dr. Sabine Boomlik and Lucy McNair from the Departments of Education and Language Acquisition and English, respectively. Uh, and the, we've been talking about the New York Forum of Amazing, of uh, Amazir, excuse me, <laughs> Amazir film in the Little Theater, uh, which is going to be tomorrow, uh, April 20th, and all the other uh, activities that are going on around it. Uh, so thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And we're going to close the way we came in with uh, some more music from the Wilmad Festival, Festival in Tiaruen. Uh Thank you. Bye-bye.